Where are we going from? Crab Island. Where are we going? Crab Island. Where are we going? We're going to see crabs. Um, shells. Maybe. And... Yeah. Let's see. Quite the adventure. Maybe we'll see some frogs. Dolphins. We're going to see some birds. Let's see this. Bye. Everybody, while we wait for Sean to get back down here, um, you, you met Sean upstairs. He's going to be my first mate today, and he's going to be your guide on Crab Bank. We're actually going to be able to get off of the boat and onto the island today. That's not possible all throughout the year, but this time of year it is, and we've got the right tide for it too. So it should be a really good trip. My name's Olivia. I'll be your captain this evening. Um, this is a Coast Guard inspected vessel. Welcome aboard, Gannett. Um, and so we built her to Coast Guard specifications to make her as safe as possible. And because of that, there's a few things that they ask me to tell you before we get underway. Predators. Um, so seabirds, they eat fish and they are colony nesters. On the other hand, we've got shorebirds. Does anybody know off the top of their head any examples of shorebirds? That's right, an, oyster, an American oyster catcher, which is a bird we could very well see today. I'll have my eye out for them, probably hanging out on an oyster reef. Um, so if we do see an oyster catcher, it's probably going to be as the tide gets a little bit lower throughout the next couple of hours. And we start to see these oyster oyster beds that are just under the water here. But oyster catchers, in general, our shorebirds are those birds that you see. They're usually pretty small and they've got skinny little legs and a lot of times a long skinny bill. And what they're doing with that long skinny bill is not catching fish, right? They're not fish eaters. They're taking that long skinny bill and they're sticking it down in the fluff mud, in the sand, or inside of an oyster shell, right? And so shorebirds eat, the, the big umbrella term would be invertebrates, right? They're eating all those little creepy crawlies, all those worms and those crabs and those oysters, all the inverts that live out here. And there's a so this is sort of a traditional Shem Creek. Apparently a few decades ago, there used to be so many strip boats on Shem Creek that you could walk from that bridge that we went under five minutes ago, all the way down to Charleston Harbor, just from stepping from one strip boat to another. And it was like three deep on both sides with just a narrow little uh, inlet through the middle for, for other boats to get to. So definitely changing economies. There's still some shrimping happening. Something that we love to see is up at the top of these big green shrimp nets that they deploy when they're out in the deeper water. All of those nets now have a little grate at the top. It's like a little escape hatch. It's called a TED, a turtle exclusion device. And that does exactly what it sounds like. That means that when bigger animals like sea turtles get trapped in those nets, they can hold their breath for a really long time, but not forever, right? They have to come up and breathe. And so we were finding that a lot of turtles, unfortunately, were drowning in those shrimp nets and other big animals, you know, marine mammals and things like that. So that, those little escape hatches became mandatory about 30 years ago or so, so that those turtles could escape. And 30 years later, we're seeing a huge boom in the numbers of nesting turtles that have been saved with, with that uh, measure. Y'all, the turbor is not always this pretty. Sometimes you come out here out of the, the safety and the shelter of Shem Creek, and you come out into like three foot chop and it's windy and it's messy. become airborne um, because they don't have oil on their feathers like all other birds do. That oil keeps them dry and waterproof and warm. But if you want to dive deep under the water and chase fish, you don't want to be waterproof because that's like wearing a life jacket and trying to dive down. So they don't have those oils, but that means after they hunt, they get really waterlogged. So if you've ever seen a cormorant sitting with its wings spread out in the sun, that's just to dry out a seagull, they're all using their beak, right, to catch fish. What do we call a bird that uses its sharp talons to catch its prey? The raptor, it's a bird of prey. So it was a trick question. 
they're not actually seabirds because they're raptors. So like eagles and peregrine falcons and all the hawks and kites and things like that. That's what osprey fall under is that umbrella. Pouch, right? But they've got to move it from their pouch into their throat. So they sit there for a second, they drain all the water out, and then they throw their head back to move it into their throat. So if you watch them for a second, you can kind of tell if they actually caught it or not. And I would say it's less than 50% of the time that they, it seems that they catch something. This is Crab Bank out in front of us. I will ask you to take a seat because we're going to come right up on the beach here. There's going to be a little bump. looking for shark teeth. We have found three already. One, two, three. The black ones, which are all black, um, they are thousands of years old.
Bye Island. We're gonna get back on our boat. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.